Hi designers, it's Haley with Silver Moon Design School. Yes, I'm making a change. I'm separating my YouTube and training courses from my main brand. So welcome to Silver Moon Design School. Today, I'm gonna to show you how to make a perfume bottle from scratch using Adobe Illustrator and Adobe Dimension. First things first, we're gonna start with our reference image on its own layer. I've placed it on this layer called reference and I've locked it so that I don't accidentally move it around as I trace things on my art layer. First off, I'm gonna start by creating a rectangle around the base of the shape. We'll serve two purposes with this. The first one is to show our rulers and we're going to drag to the center point. I'm gonna adjust this a little bit because I wanna make sure that this is right on the edge of that shape and that my ruler will sit right in the middle of this guide. The other purpose of this rectangle, luckily, is to create the base of this shape. So I will start rounding these edges until it curves nicely around our reference. Now what we need to do is create this inset. So I'm going to copy creating that shape. And then from here, I can start to move and add anchor points to my shape in order to reach this weird, cool, organic shape to make it look really lifelike when we take it into dimension. I think I'll create a separate piece for this little inset here since I think it will be round and this shape will be square and they just use slightly different tools. I will leave that for later and just continue going around my shape here. Now I could also trace around this with my pencil tool, but I just kind of like working with a square shape and then modifying from there and make sure that some of these insets they just match up really evenly, geometrically. So now I'll highlight both of these two, just click and drag, and I'll go to my shape mode in Pathfinder, and I'll say minus front. And this, you can see when I turn in the fill, has created that shape. Now I'll need to drag over a copy, and yes, I work off the artboard sometimes, but all we need is this shape here. This will be the front and the back, but I'm just gonna create it once because then I'll just duplicate that in dimension. I'll continue to create the round pieces and the um, straw using a cool new feature on the 3D and materials menu and I'm really excited to show you. So I'm gonna um, start from the top and then finish with the straw. Um, what I'll do is I'll start with that rectangle tool again and what I'll do is just drag it, we'll go top to bottom, clicking on the anchor point let me round this or flip, let me flip to the outline and then use my scissors tool to trim because we don't need this inside line. Don't delete your guide. So now I'm gonna copy this, still lining it up with that center point, but I'll drag it out and then take these anchors and move them down. I'll also create a new rectangle, a skinny tiny one here. Scissors tool to trim. We don't need that line. And then I will round these anchor points to make that ledge. And then this is gonna just be a nice square piece. And again, trimming with the scissors tool as such. Okay, now we have all the round pieces. I'm going to flip those around and make those silver. I might also make this silver. Okay, and then I will copy this rectangle, drag it down, and create this little piece because this will be round. I'm gonna make another copy and make the insert rounding that corner. And now we're gonna create the straw. So I'm gonna grab my brush tool and I will choose a stroke of like five points. And all I'm gonna do is trace the shape of this straw. Ooh, got a little wonky but that's okay we can adjust those anchor points after and use the smooth tool under the brush menu to just remove some of those anchor points that might not blend itself to the shape and then i'm gonna bring up the straw part because it does go into the top this base there so i'm gonna bring it up we can always hide it within this metal piece that's solid and opaque that you can't see in but i'd rather have a little bit more than not enough and make this gray as well and then under 3D and materials, we're gonna start creating all of our pieces, but I wanna show you this new addition first. Under inflate, this used to just only inflate one of the sides and 
I had a hard time wrapping my head around creating two and merging, but now there's a toggle here that says inflate both sides. So you're gonna click that and we can come to our preset, rotate around, and we can see it has inflated both sides. It's just a little too deep. So I'm going to reduce that down to like 0.01 depth so that it is a round straw that matches our reference. Oh, it's just so exciting to see. Okay, and now we're going to work on these round pieces. I'll work backwards, selecting each individual piece and clicking revolve. So depending on which side you drew your objects, you'll have the option to click um, which side you wanna offset from. So if you drew on the right side, clicking the default to the left edge, you'll get exactly what you need. But if you drew them on the left side, you'll need to change the offset direction to the right side. I didn't make the rules, it's just how it goes. <laughs> and then revolve and revolve. Ooh, the other thing, I click that eyeball to toggle that off. The other thing I forgot is this little spray nozzle. So I'm gonna make a circle, make that a gray color and we'll come back to her. I wanna show you guys how to make this shape. We'll click this button called extrude. And from there you can play with the depth. Choose a depth that looks good to you. I think that one looks good to me. If I rotate it around, that's a good value. It's a good size perfume bottle. We'll come over to our front and our back and we will also choose extrude again. And this time I'm gonna make it a little bit more thin, but I'm also gonna add a bevel. So toggle on this bevel menu. And I'll choose round and just play with the settings. So I'm gonna bring the width in. I'm also gonna bring in the height and we're just gonna play with those until we find what kind of curve looks the best for our perfume bottle. It's good sometimes to bring it around and see from an angle to try to match the angle that we have over here, try to mimic it. And here also in the menu, if you wanted something, you could bevel both sides. So if you had a solid shape that didn't have this weird inset, you could technically bevel both sides and just have one object. But since I want this organic shape to show, it's clear glass that needs to show, I'm going to go with this process where we still create two pieces and combine them in dimension. The last part is the little nozzle up here. So if I zoom in, click 3D and materials, I'm going to click extrude again but I've got to change the depth to like 0.05. Let's try that. And I'm also going to bevel it just to give it an extra added sense of realism. I'm going to come in and I'm going to choose convex. And this is where I'm going to bring the width down. Definitely going to bring the height down. And this will replicate that squirty nozzle, that little plastic piece. Okay, so don't forget it. I'm going to toggle on my eyeball for this top piece. But now we have all of our pieces created. And another fun feature of Adobe Illustrator 2023 is that you can export these objects right from this menu. So I'm gonna click on each of these and click Export 3D Object. So again, clicking on each of these, scrolling down, or just extending my menu down, and clicking Export 3D Object. And it's adding it to this asset export queue. We used to have an extra step of file and then export, but this gives us what we need right away. Okay, so now I have all of these pieces in here. I'm just gonna label them so I know what they are when I look at them in my finder. And once I have all of those named, then I will remove all of these USDAs. The only file type you need is this OBJ file. And then make sure that all of those pieces are highlighted. Hold shift and click to highlight all of them and then export them. All right, that was part one of how to create the object files in Illustrator. Now in part two, we're going to jump over to Adobe Dimension where I'll show you how to put it all together. I'll see you there.